I talked to this young child, and he's a very interesting and good kid. And I asked him, how did you grow up to be the way you are? How did you get your upbringing? He said that he was in a yeshiva, well, not actually yeshiva, in a religious school. And he said that it really helped him because he knew history and uh, Torah as a result. He said only one thing was harmful, that he was lied to with respect to the Creator, meaning only at the age of 12 he understood that actually it's a lie, all that uh, he was told about the Creator. But he got a very good foundation. True. I agree. I agree. But today it can no longer work. These days we have to give the right direction from birth. But previously, uh, such an education, such an upbringing worked, and thus only today do we discover the crisis among the believers, among the religious upbringing. And they themselves, they admit it, they have big problems because you, they have to very quickly bring in there what we're trying to do. It's the explanation of how to become like the Creator. We came out on a level now where we have to become like humans, ascend to the degree of Adam, similar to the Creator. Previously, there was no such demand towards us. We simply went through a period of the growth of the egoism, and now it comes to an end and starts its change, its correction to become like the Creator, and whoever does not engage in that, he as if continues to, so to speak, hyperactively to somehow push his egoism into different horrible forms. I to say that, um, like, under the influence of radiation, of different such chemical influences, come out such deviated forms of uh, the living tissue, you know, the same here. That's what we see today with the youth and also among the believers, among um, among the, the religious environment, they, they nonetheless still have a framework that uh, holds people, but nonetheless they can no longer keep doing that and uh, m mutation that's that's horrible what's happening today with people what you see going on today with the youth that's mutation because the egoism their egoism is not let to engage in the system of correction in time and thus they mutate into such horrible forms and there's nothing to do about that but to quickly add the Kabbalistic addition to it, uh, at least as an addition to what they already get, and then we'll see a normal form to it all. Otherwise, you simply harm, kill. Because we say that there is the will to receive, the will to enjoy. It grows. It grew and grew and grew and grew till the 20th century, at the end of the 20th century. Even in the middle of the 20th century, that desire ceased to normally develop. It started mutating, started acquiring such uh, incorrect forms. If previously the ego it grew and tried to adapt life to itself, to earn better, to uh, have a better life, have a better vacation, have a better family. It's in the normal human framework uh, to somehow find your place and make it convenient and good. That's all. It came to an end. That's what happened with America, with the consumer society. Europe, they're already slowly dying. And with Russia, you yourself see what's going on. And the Arab world, they found for themselves a savior and uh, will conquer everyone. But as a principle, 
All that is a result of the growth of the egoism, and it has to start correcting itself from a certain degree. It already reached its level. Now it has to start correcting itself, and it's not being corrected. It wasn't given a method to correct itself. Now it has to become all around the world. Uh, it has to become more and more similar to the creator, to the global power of nature. It has to be all-encompassing, systematic. It has to get into a general synthesis with the whole of nature, still vegetative, animate, and man. We have to sense all of that. We have to conjoin with the whole of nature, not on the animalistic level, as uh, the different Eastern teachings call us to do. And if we don't give that, then that's it. It doesn't work. It mutates. It degradates, mutates, and you see what happens to this day. Thus, I personally have no problems whatsoever with the uh, understanding of what to do with uh, these days, and especially with uh, the youth, with the young generation. No one has a method for it in the world. Nothing, completely nothing altogether. No one is capable of doing anything, neither in America, nor Russia, nor Europe, nor uh, South America. I've been in all of our groups all over the world, and everyone has the, the same problem. It could be Indians from South America who have a completely different mentality than Europeans, than the Germans, or Canada, or America, which are also different mentalities, or Israel and Australia, regardless who. The problems, they don't change. It's the same everywhere. Go to any family. I've been to many different families. I, I, I was a guest there. Does anyone have uh, any kind of method? Are you arguing with me? I'm not inventing anything. We're learning from nature, from the Creator. That is the encompassing law of nature, and that's what you have to take in. It's built on a very simple principle of love, mutual understanding, mutuality, globality, integrality, and we're heading towards that uh, in two steps. Don't do unto others what you do not want to be done to you, and love another as thyself. And that's the only thing that Kabbalah teaches. But what does it mean that it teaches? It gives you the ability to draw the upper light, meaning the Creator Himself, upon yourself. It's like a child. He's in our, in our environment, and he becomes equal to us because he learns from us. The very same way, we have to attract a greater force of the Creator upon ourselves, and we'll feel how it changes us. It's a very thin matter here, subtle matter, um, a power that you can't really grasp, that it's not revealed in the world, but you can reveal it according to the result. I don't understand. It's hard. Show. Give an example. OK, I can show you the, the general rules for it, but that's it. Because the result of the education itself includes that hidden power of nature within it that has to influence us. And actually, that's how everyone is being educated. A child, when he looks at you, how is it that he understands that he has to be like you? Looking at you, how does he suddenly do the same you do? You're, you're, you yourself are surprised. Suddenly he pronounces something and he becomes a grown-up. Where does all that come from? From that very power. But we have to qualitatively draw it upon ourselves, its degree. Uh, from an entirely different level, from the human level, so it will make us not developed animals, but similar to the Creator, the level of the human level. That's what we have to get from it. And that will happen only if we consciously awaken that level of performance in it. And those kids, uh, suppose, uh, that will be brought up that way, how will they react to that environment? 
He's in this, uh, suppose, in this environment, and he will see very clearly what's happening on the outside, and he won't take an example from that? No, it's uh, an entire system that's built both on explanation, example, the feeling of uh, that the kid gets uh, as of how you live, what's important for you in life. You make him your partner, and you're thriving forwards. You see what's going on with our kids. You're here already for a pretty long time, and you see how practically they know what we're doing. They're with us on our lessons, discussions, uh, meals, conventions, everything. They, they uh, do everything when, uh, with us, they prepare uh, different uh, films with us, uh, texts, everything. Meaning a child from childhood, he looks at the more grown-up children, he sees that those more grown-up children, the youth, they look up to us. You see what an example he has. And small children look only at grown children. They don't look at uh, the grown-ups. A children of the age of uh, five looks at the age of seven, ten, and the ten-year-old maybe looks at the fifteen-year-old. And the fifteen-year-old, he's like us already. And thus, we don't have to draw him any place. We don't have to convince him. No, I'm not saying that we have to convince. That's the most natural form of education of upbringing. How do they uh, educate kids in different uh, tribes? How do they make men out of them? The very same way. They take them hunting. Uh, they they uh, uh, cut their skin here and there. They shoot a uh, crossbow. They're proudful that they're being taken with uh, the grown men, and that's, that's clear. The same here, that kid together with his father sitting on the lesson at night. They can't escape anywhere from that. We don't understand how those very first tribes acted correctly, simply as this feeling that that's what nature demands. And how do animals bring up their children? their offsprings the very same way naturally they take them with them hunting in every place and that's how they're being brought up they give them an example only as a result of example i bring only as a result of example what example is there here the dad comes home from work sits in front of the tv takes a bottle of beer yells at the mom curses that's a kid's example here no he takes the kid with him they sit together they listen to the Kabbalah, sit at a meal together, afterwards something else together, meaning the child, he will naturally be a part of that. He won't be able to escape that and he won't want to escape that. And in addition to that, he's also fulfilled with a way of looking at the world, an entire philosophy. And what a philosophy. He, he sees how it's implemented and realized. Not that simply someone invented it uh, somewhere. Or... These aren't toys. It's not Marxism or any other philosophies.